So when we implement ASICs, do we actually go in and draw the layouts ourselves? Digital circuits contain billions of transistors. Small digital circuits will contain millions of transistors. If we ask the designer to draw the layout of each transistor individually and connect them, then nobody will be able to design a circuit. Hand-drawn layouts are usually used to implement something called full custom ASICs. And by full custom, we mean just that. It's totally customized. Every single track is drawn by someone. Uh, full custom ASICs are great because they are, um, you know, fully optimized to the purpose we want them uh, for, and therefore they have a very high efficiency. But full custom ASICs are usually used for analog circuits. In digital circuits, they can be used in really critical parts of the circuit to speed them up. The majority of digital circuits are um, of a category called standard cell ASICs. And standard cell ASICs do not use full custom layouts. Instead, they arrange the layouts of something uh, called standard cells in neat rows. So standard cells are mini layouts, which are the squares we are showing here. There are mini layouts of basic building blocks, like basic logic or like basic um, arithmetic functions like a half adder or a full adder and standard cells are going to have the same height so that when we arrange them next to each other they will fit in rows and this allows us to build a large layout using these small layouts when we look at the design flow we will understand that the designer doesn't actually even specify the uh, standard cells to use Instead, the designer is going to write a description of the circuit in a hardware description language and intermediate CAD tools are going to translate this into the necessary standard cells. Uh, once the standard cells that we need have been picked, they need to be arranged and they need to be connected to each other. So when the tool um, picks the standard cells it needs to use, it picks them from something called a standard cell library. A library is a collection of available standard cells, a collection of available building blocks, which we can draw from to implement our circuit. And so the question is, when you have a circuit and you break it down, which elements do you break it down into? And these are drawn from something called the library. And the standard cell library is vendor specific, so it is uh, related to whoever uh, or whomever you are fabricating with. Now, um, the standard cell in the library will be uh, an entry, and this entry will contain information about that sp specific standard cell. It will contain information, for example, about the logic function implemented by the standard cell. If we're talking about a combinational circuit, that would be a truth table. If we're talking about the sequential circuit, we're going to talk about a state transition table. Uh, the standard cell entry, of course, contains also the layout because that's, you know, the whole point. We have to arrange the small, these small layouts next to each other and connect them together so that we have the overall layout. And let's not forget why we want the overall layout. We want the overall layout because that's what is sent to the fabrication facility and that's where we get the photo masks from. Uh, the standard cell entry will also contain delay information. So it will contain delay information, standard delay information, standard propagation delay information, or uh, TCQ or T setup for, uh, uh, for uh, sequential elements. And it will contain information about parasitics. These are additional capacitances and resistances which occur due to the layout. So for example, when you draw a, uh, an NMOS, th that NMOS is going to have a diffusion track and that diffusion track in the drain and the source is going to add a parasitic resistance. This is usually not taken into consideration in uh, the delay information. So these are the four basic like categories of information that you have for every entry in the standard cell. And so let's look, for example, at uh, a standard cell layout of a, uh, an inverter. 
Uh, as you can see, uh, there are some rules and regulations about, stand, about layouts for standard cells. The number one rule is that the height of the cell has to be constant. So if you're going to draw a, uh, an inverter, it has to have the same height as an AND gate, uh, it has to have the same height as a full adder. Every entry in the standard cell library has to have the same height, and this is called the pitch. And the reason for this is that when we, when we arrange them in rows, we want them to make neat rows. So you can imagine that when we draw the, the layout of an inverter, it wouldn't be actually the most optimal layout because we have more area than we need because the pitch is fixed for us. And so the pitch is not usually um, the pitch that the inverter needs, it's the pitch that some of the larger circuits will need. Now, another uh, couple of things about uh, standard cell layouts is that they have to have a VDD uh, line running in metal one near the top. It has to be of a specific width. And they have to have another metal one wire running at the bottom and it has to provide ground and it has to be of, the, of, of specific width. So they have to run in very specific locations and they have to be all the same in all the standard cells. The well, the P well also needs to cover the top half of the standard cell, and if it's not the half, it needs to be the top, um, the same proportion of the standard cell in all standard cells. But this all has to do with uh, what happens when we arrange cells next to each other, because things need to align properly. Uh, another thing is that we also need to provide inputs and outputs in Metal 1. So you can see the output here is available in uh, the Metal 1 layer. And the input, even though it is ready in the polysilicon layer, we have to take it up within the standard cell to the metal one layer. This again standardizes uh, our expectations from the standard cell and makes the job of routing between cells easier. So let's look at the layout, for example, of a two input NOR gate. Uh, we find that it has the same ground and supply lines running. It has the same height of the well, it has the same height of the cell, which is like the cardinal rule. Uh, the inputs are all provided in a metal uh, one layer and the output is provided in a metal one layer. So these are rules that apply to every standard cell. Uh, the more complex the standard cell, the wider its layout could be, but height has to be the same because that's you know the number one rule of standard cells. Now we're gonna take a look at like, um, um, uh, we're going to take a look at like a very simplified entry uh, for, for example, the inverter in a standard cell library. And we said that it contains four basic pieces of information about uh, the standard cell. First, it includes a logic model, which is, uh, in this case, it's going to be a truth table. Of course, this is a simplified truth table because we are only considering the inputs zero and one. Um, we could have inputs that are like weak zero or weak one, uh, strong zero, strong one. We can have intermediate cases between zero and one, and we can characterize these using a truth table. In terms of uh, the circuit model, what we normally mean is delays, and we could provide like uh, intrinsic delays for this um, circuit, as well as like, for example, uh, logical effort which allows us to uh, understand how the cell will drive exter external delays. Um, and of course, the layout has to be provided. And finally, parasitics, which measures, uh, as I said, like the uh, additional resistances and capacitances that you see by virtue of knowing the layout. Because only once you know the layout would you be able to say specifically how much capacitance there is and how much resistance there is. There is, of course, some kind of interplay between the circuit model and the parasitics, uh, but the circuit model is usually derived from a circuit simulation using SPICE, for example, which is uh, going to use a uh, very generic model for the transistor, whereas the parasitics give us more information about how the standard cell would perform.